So hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, so today um, we we're just going to be working on we're going to be working on dashing Ginger Airways, and we're going to be building up the uh, the Bally Hub today. Um, so I'm going to walk through how I do it, um, just what I choose to do, how I pick my routes, and um, how I set up the wave to do this. Um, it's going to be a single wave mainly, um, just to test demand. I can basically gauge what I need to do based on the market analysis tool. But uh, in general, we're just going to try to build up as much connections as we can in one wave. And we're going to try to move as many passwords as possible. Um, so today I'm going to be working on that. Um, it should be, we'll see how long this video goes. Um, and we don't, I don't really know. Um, but basically, you'll just get to see what I do. I set up this wave. Um, Valley is not really one of my big hubs. So doing this is, we'll see how, what the demand is going to be. Like I said. Um, so today we're going to be using, let me use an A330s. I'm pretty much stockpile these things. Um, it's going to be a matter of scheduling them all to land at the same time. Not necessarily to depart at the same time, but land at the same time. That's what I care about because I'm building up a way for that. Um, we're going to be, this is going to be in tandem with the Max 8s, which will be doing some of the lower demand, longer and skinny routes. Um, so I already have some routes in mind that I'm going to be using them for. And so, like I said, we'll see how that goes. Um, so let's get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do, um, we've already I already pulled up the market analysis tab. It's open already. Um, so first, second thing I'm gonna to go to is uh, check out. We're gonna to go to Wikipedia. We're gonna look up. We're gonna look up Valley Airport. Um, this is a common thing that I look up. Obviously, I do this a lot. This is the wrong tab. We're going to Wikipedia. So this is what we want here. So the thing we're going to go to is airlines and destinations. So I want to see, basically I want to see where, who and what flies out of here. Um, so that's what we're looking at. So we see some flights to Hong Kong, Manila, Taipei, Beijing, basically a lot of flights to China. We see a few domestic destinations, but um, mostly what I'm looking at is all the international places I can use to connect. So it looks like Xi'an is one. That's another place in China. So just a lot of places in China. I think I'm about to open some new stations. So Doha is there too. Okay. So basically I know, right, I have an idea of where I can open flights. Seasonal flights usually aren't in airline sim are not very good for doing something like this. Um, they don't really mimic the demand, and I don't even think airline sim simulates that. So you can't you can't really uh, base your stuff off of seasonal flights. Auckland, however, despite this, I know based on my background in aviation, I know that Emirates flies there, so I don't necessarily need to be so concerned about that because I even though it's a seasonal flight here, Dubai fly uh, Emirates flies almost every day. Next thing I do is I go to Flight Radar 24. And uh, what I want to see here is what kind of planes. Now, this is an off time for. Uh, this is actually an off time for Indonesia now. And the sun might be just coming up, so we might see some flights. So basically what I want to do is I want to see what kind of flights are coming in here. Okay, so here's a flight from Ningbo, China. And it's flown by 737. We got some flights from Guangzhou. Ignore that. I can basically, I can filter it out as well. So that's what we'll do. So we'll filter it by airport. Or DPS. And what should happen is flight radar should filter that out, and it does. So we can see flights from Jakarta, which I already know I'm gonna. I'm not gonna have a problem filling these. I'm not really concerned about that. What I'd like to see is we got a flight from Mumbai. Never seen this before. So, because temporary, this is a relatively new route based on my past research. Let's see. 
It's flown by Garuda Indonesia. And it is not listed here. That's why I use that's why I use flight radar basically to back that up. So that's how I know it's a relatively new flight. So I probably won't be airline sim really doesn't works in the past kind of. So I won't I likely will not have I likely won't be able to uh, start a route based on this. But I do know Qatar has been flying this for a while. So I know that's a good one. Singapore, it's another one. So we got another going job. So that means we can we can expect some relatively good load factors there. There's another one there. Another Chinese airport, Shanghai. So we got a flight to Beijing. So we can expect some pretty decent load factors maybe there. I know Hong Kong is a definitely good one. I know uh, Cathay and uh, Hong Kong Airlines amongst Garuda and plenty of other airlines fly there. So Chengdu is another one. We got Seoul there. That's actually something I was expecting as well as. So we got two flights there from Seoul. We got Osaka, uh, Narita, Tokyo Narita. So we can expect some. I think we can expect some good flights to China. Let's see what we got down in Australia, which is our, which is where all this stuff is going to be connecting to anyway. So we got Melbourne, Jetstar flies to Brisbane, from Brisbane, and then Melindo flies from Brisbane as well. That's not bad. Let's see what else we got. So Qatar is flying another seven eight seven. And Emirates fires a triple seven on August, something like that. That's typical. So we can expect, okay, so at least one daily flight between Emirates. I must consider that in my world, I have plenty of competitors based in Thailand, Vietnam especially, and India. So and I got to think that my flight's going to be going from Bali. Bali may connect to a lot of different places in between there and, and uh, Dubai, so I may not be able to fill that flight. But I'm going to do it anyway because hopefully I'm hoping connections between both airports help fill that up. So we're not going to fly a 900 between those places. This 900 actually needs to go into a different fleet folder because it has a flight. So now we're just going to base, we're going to work off of what we have here. So the first thing we're going to schedule. So the next thing I need to do, I don't know, I have an idea of where the flights are. I'm going to go to Bali here and I'm open up. I need to find out where I'm going to start my slots. Now, all my airports operate on a 04, 8, 12, 16, uh, 20 schedule. So um, basically, we operate on every four hours. I fly my ways every four hours. Um, so it looks like in Bali, the best way for this is the four o'clock wave. Um, as expected, I, I pretty much knew this ahead of time. It seems like early morning blocks. And uh, everything is scheduled on local time for me based on added your card. I wish I had changed it to um, Zulu time or U UTC time, but I didn't. Um, so now everything is scheduled based on that. And it would confuse me more to change it back. So what we'll do is everything will be based on the 4 o'clock. So I believe Bali is an hour ahead of Jakarta. So if we want 4 o'clock here, if we want the flight to depart at 4 o'clock Jakarta time, it's got to actually depart at 5 o'clock Bali time. So that's fine with me. There's actually nothing wrong with this. It looks like we have enough slots to do it. So inevitably, it won't be a bad thing. Because basically, I want to bring in as many connections from my other airports as possible. And in order to do that, They'll need to be on fives because every other airport isn't on that time. Every other airport is on local time. And even Surabaya, an airport that's less than 400 nautical miles away from, kilometers away from Bali, is uh, working off of Jakarta time. And it's on the same time zone as Jakarta. So just operating between those airports is very difficult because of that. So we're going to work We're going to work based on this here. So, we're gonna, so five o'clock is going to be our, our new wave. So pretty much, in order for this to work, Bali has a one-hour turnaround time. A one-hour transfer time, yes. So 
all flights need to land between at least three hours. Three hour, it can land a maximum of three hours out. So two o'clock is the latest they can arrive. It's the earliest they can arrive, while four o'clock is the latest they can arrive. So we want to have, we probably want to have our planes in by three, three o'clock. So I probably, I, I want to have my planes landing probably between two thirty and three and 3.30 so that they don't enter, so probably between 3.29 and 2.30. So that's an hour for arrivals. We want those planes in, there in that time frame so they can land and not conflict with the current uh, four o'clock flights that I have. So that's how we're gonna work that out. As you can see, there's all the flights. So that's the first thing. So now that that's done, we can start scheduling. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I know there's a flight between Bal to Doha. I need to check to make sure that this A320, A330, a correction, can actually fly between that place with a load or the passenger load that I need. So we're gonna check Doha. Okay, so that works. So it's a nine hour flight. So basically how I'm gonna do this is I, I'm gonna schedule based on based on the return, not on the departure. So what'll happen, my international flights get a flight of 100, just get a, a solid 100, I don't care. I don't really care what my uh, international flights are numbered. It doesn't really matter, they, are, they fly when they can fly, so. I'm actually gonna to need to hire some more pilots. So how many pilots do we got? Oh, we need we need pilots big time. Okay, so let's, let's wow. Never thought I'd see that. There's actually not a lot of A330 pilots out. Interesting. Okay, so it looks like what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to uh, hire, I'm going to have to train 48 new pilots. I'm actually going to hire some more than what I need. So I'm actually going to hire 56, 74, so I hire 74 pilots. Oh man, I just did that. I just trained them. Well, okay. Now we'll do it right. Okay. Cool. All right, that's that. So we got the pilots hired. Sign them here. As a matter of fact, might as well just go through the whole fleet and do it. Click, click, click. All right, sign pilots. I have two different seating configurations because some are better. When you look at the uh, online reservation system for airline sim, sometimes you want the, I use the higher seating just to get that bump up and uh get that bump up in the ORS so I can hopefully feel the fly a lot easier. So that happens sometimes. I use a different config, it's slightly better. So I think I'm gonna use a different numbering system for Bali. I think we're gonna go with 500s for our departures, for our flights out of Bali. So we'll see if those are available for me. I think they are, Should the whole numbering system should be. So 500, we'll do 501, that means it's a departure. And we'll do, DPS to Doha. Okay, right now I don't really care about when it departs. I know it's going to depart somewhere around 12. And as we can see, it's definitely a long flight. Um, I don't even think we're going to be. A, I just want to. I need to find out. 
It's a nine hour flight, so it's an 18 hour turnaround total. I'm actually surprised. So in order for us to meet our goal for this aircraft, it's not going to be able to fly this flight every day. That's basically what we I'm able to see here. Um, if I, I can fly this flight every day, but there's no I'm not going to be able to uh, land at the spot where I wanted to land. Actually, I could if I scaled it right. There's no guarantee that Doha is pretty slot restricted, so I can't shouldn't be messing around with this too much. Especially at 12. Yeah, it's probably pretty bad there. Okay, so we reset flight C to be landed between 2.30 and 3.29. So we can put this here at 1,300. And we're going to go here, checking what Doha's got. And of course, it's going to be a nightmare making that happen. Especially at 1,700. So it's actually 1300 that I'm scheduling for, not everything's in local time. So I'm scheduling in 1300, which does not have availability. So I can actually try it. And then another way to bump up yourself in LRS is to bump that speed up. But in this case, I think I'm gonna leave it alone because we want our flight to land between two thirty at two thirty. That's the latest we can arrive. Okay, so like I said, one th the one thing I want to main I want to do is make sure I schedule the plane based on its departure, not on its arrival. It's based on uh, correct, based on its arrival, not its departure. So when I'm, I want the plane to land at a certain time, so now I'm scheduling it backwards. Typically, they don't do this, so it's probably going to take longer to do it this way. The A330 is a great aircraft. That's why I love it so much. It works well in my for the operations that I use it for. Everyone has their own preference, however. So I want this flight actually to go in the op. I'm going to try to schedule everything so it arrives and departs at the same time. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm actually going to give some of these flights to another aircraft. And I have enough A330s to do that. So the first thing I want to do is schedule it as fast. I want to get this plane flying as fast as possible. And I wanted to depart at 5. Jakarta time. So it's not actually going to be able to do that because of the way the A330 is just a big aircraft. So that plane that has is landing at 9 Doha time. And I don't think, is that even away from my... It's critical that I try to land at times when my uh, alliance members are doing their flights. But that also means that this is the case when I don't have any slots to land at. And the only thing I can do here is just try to push it an hour, but that's not going to really work. Sadly, Doha does not have a secondary airport for me to operate to, so I operate to that has better slot conditions. So the first thing we'll do is get rid of the speed. So we're landing at 9.30, if obviously I'm probably getting 20 minutes of the doing that, slowing it down. And I do. So, I think we're going to save Doha for later. So 10.05 is what we got. So 10.10 is the alertness. We can land at 10 o'clock.
interesting. So let's think about this. This plane is, all planes land at 2.30, that gives us 5 o'clock as the latest departure time they can have. I could, I could have this plane depart later, at around 5. And I think that's what I'm going to do. What we'll do is we'll have it depart at 5. Uh, it's already departing at 5, isn't it? Yeah. I got to see what's available at 6. I think this is a wave for my boy. Yeah. So 610 is the latest, I can, as an earliest I can depart out of there in that block. It depends. Do we even have a slot? 11 looked pretty good if I was going to make it happen. But I need. So I, my plane arrives at 1110, flying at its slowest possible speed. If we bump it up a little bit, we can actually get it to land. The finesse that it takes to schedule planes at certain times. What was the time? Eleven oh five. Oh, Monday's just not one of them. <laughs> The next thing I gotta be worried about is if I'm landing in a wave for my teammate there. What I just do? So basically, let's see. Are we landing in a wave for him? Arriving or departing? Good. See, this is an arrival wave, so this matters. So now he's all his all my alliance members are stop planes are landing at the same time. That's a good thing. That's what we want. That way, it's easier for me to fill the aircraft flying there. Now, we depart at 1700. So the next thing we want to do is see if we're departing in a wave as well. And we are not. We're departing in a, we're departing during an arriving wave. Actually, no, that's my time, not his. Let me finish scheduling this first, and then we'll look at that. A different plane will have to have a different schedule, which is probably for the best. Okay, so that's all we had. That was all the availability, I believe, during that block. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Tuesday. Okay. So we'll remove these two flights, these three flights. So now we'll check this one. It's actually departing at 1300, which is hopefully a good thing. Uh, it's somewhat good, somewhat bad. We might catch some stuff. We may not. I can easily check this. So, let's see what we're going to be doing. That's the problem with operating in the slot restricted areas. It's, that's uh, it's very difficult. And sometimes you don't get the best of what you might like. I care about the outbound flight. While we miss, while we do miss a lot, we do catch a lot. So, we miss a lot there. We miss, we do miss a lot, but we also catch a lot. So, you don't always the best here. 
Let's see what else. We might get something on the bottom. Sometimes that's how it works. Not in this case. So yeah, so in this case, it looks like we're going to catch some flights to Dusseldorf, Bahrain, Amsterdam. Some of these matter. Some of these not so much. So, this is okay for me. It's alright. So, we'll work with that. I'm actually hoping for more direct demand anyway. All right, so that's the basic schedule. They're done. I will move the rest of these flights somewhere else. So we'll have to fill in the rest of this holes with some additional flights to some uh, higher, some other destinations. But we'll see how that works when the time comes. We may end up just flying it to. It may do a Sydney flight here and there. So that's that plane schedule. Um, I will f add the flights over here. So they'll be in the 500s. Okay, so the next thing we want to do, so it looks like Doha 1300 is departure, so let's see what we got, we got 1300 and 1.1305 on Saturday. So we've got to see what we can do about Wednesday, which appears to be the most popular day to travel. And to fly flights. I don't know, I never understood that. Let's see if we got something. Well, as you can see, Wednesday's always the most full. Unfortunately for me, that sucks. So we'll have to see about this. This flight needs to be flown as fast as possible. And then we can maybe push it. Okay, we can push it back to 1425. This is actually not going to work. Airline said, well, let you add 60, and so that's not going to work. So it looks like we'll just, I have to make an entirely new flight for that. I'll make a, I'll have to make an entire flight for that to get that to work. So I gotta fix this because it'd be sad to go through all this work and it not work out the way I would like it to. It's a lot harder to set up than it is to tear down. Okay, let's see what we got. So we have, we're departing at 6.10, and we want the plane to arrive at, we have an 11-way arrival for Monday. So let's see, we want the, so it looks like 11.20 is the first day. So let's, we want to put that here. So the latest I can depart. Alright, we can remove the speed help here. Let's 
So we want to slow this down as much as possible. And I can add an extra 10 minutes. Actually, I don't want to do that. So we had that extra 10 minutes, and now we can't depart out of Valley. Okay. What will make you happy? So 620 to 625, which is fine actually for this case. That actually works out. So we're still within the wave time, and we're still able to get, we're still able to fly to, uh, we're still able to connect there. So that works out. All right, so the next flight we need to do, we're not going to have that flight on Wednesday. Actually, I can't have that flight on Wednesday. Yeah, so we want to have that flight on Wednesday. 11.20 is the same thing. So just add 10. And that works for you. The next guy is Sunday. Add you. So we're looking at 11.10. Do we have, hopefully we have a slot on that side? Looks like it's going to be 11.45. Yeah, something earlier than that. Nope. Nope. Something, well, obviously we don't want anything later than that. I can shift this back 30 minutes, but it's not going to help. It's just not going to connect too much. Okay, so this one needs a special flight from Doha. Okay, so we wanted fourteen twenty-five. I'm correct. I need to see this. Hold on. It was doing thirteen hundred. So yeah, thirteen hundred. I think the earliest I could depart out was fourteen twenty-five. Yeah. Is that a wave or no? So it's yes and no. So once again, we're going to be scheduling during one of his arrival waves, which is unfortunate, as I mentioned before. I don't know why you switch back. Hopefully every place I schedule to will not be like this. Well, this is going to be an ultra long session. So we want to put this. Want to put it at third depth, fourteen twenty-five. So none. There's only one flight that this matters for, and that's one. All right, so that's the best we're going to be able to do in terms of getting that there on time.
DPS at Doha, Doha, D DPS, Doha, Doha, DPS. Oh. How did this end up here? Mm -mm. Somebody doesn't have a flight where they're supposed to have a flight. The previous plane must have a flight that is... So this plane has some weird schedule. So the flight that should be here is not. Okay, that's not a that's not a difficult fix. Not a difficult fix at all. Alright, take this one. Take that one off. And for this one, put it here. I'm soft. So the next thing we're gonna do is the next place we're gonna schedule to is Dubai, which already has a lot of flights for me. Well, not actually that many, but we'll probably fly one to uh, probably fly a flight to Doha to Dubai and Sharjah, considering given the. Uh, Given the proximity, you may be able to fill them up. Because I, I think Dubai is also slot restricted as well. It's got a lot of problems with slots. Okay, so we've already used that number. We use 503. And we're going to do Dubai. Okay, so we already know this. Close this out. I want to pull up. But oh, that's interesting. Not what I expected there. Well. There's less problems. I'm good with that. Max the speed out. Um, looks like Mr. Man here doesn't want to cooperate for the best rating. There we go. Cool. Now for the return, we want a specific arrival time. So I will move this to accommodate that. Move it again. One more hour. Okay, that's not bad. Doesn't look like Dubai wants to cooperate. Let's find what we can use. Okay, so fourteen twenty. Oh, I, I just happened to choose the worst block. Lucky me. Once again, not a big deal. We have the time. So I'll just put 225 there. And now we have the arrival on time. And that flight worked out. And there's a maintenance block every day, which means I won't have to deal with that later. Uh, let's see. I think there's a terminal there. In Dubai as well. So let me double check that. Let me check that. All right. So about the Doha flight, want to fix the prices? Yep. We're gonna need to expand the terminal. Alright, 
so that's that that one is scheduled. I think we'll fly a flight to Sharjah for good measure. Now this is a major cargo airport, so I believe that uh, there's a U.S. cargo, the, the biggest cargo airline, flies a lot of flights out of here. So you got to just be careful about when you arrive and depart. That's the only reason why you got to be careful there. All right, cool. That one is scheduled as well. I want to get that set. The prices for this one set. All right, cool. Price is set. Good. All right, so there was no real flight to Abu Dhabi in real life, so we will not be flying there. Looks like we got a flight to Moscow. She's a new. This is a new flight, so I see I can't. I can't fly this due to it being a new one. I know I probably won't fill it up. But I don't have any, we don't have any alliance members in uh, uh, Russia to help me with that. So we probably won't be flying that either. Yeah, we're not worried about that though. Tempo Up is supposed to be getting a demand update, so I'm expecting that some of these places may work out. But uh, as of right now, we don't have that. Yeah, so that is, Mumbai is a new flight. Dubai. Cool. All right, so Hong Kong. So for our new, our next flights, we already have from Bali to our Middle Eastern destinations here. I would probably need an AT50 to fly to Kuwait if it's out. So with the Middle East flights done, um, I'm actually going to cut it here in the essence of time uh, to save and have you guys sitting here for longer than an hour. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you next time.